high in the misty mountains of Gwynedd, in a land the Welsh call Eruri, the place of eagles, or in English Snowdonia, between Betusacoid and Blaina Festiniog, lies a beautiful valley through which the river Lledr runs over its rocky bed. This was the home of Owain Gwynedd, the 12th century king of Gwynedd, a prolific sire fathering 19 children of whom only six were legitimate. Under Welsh law of the period, all sons, legitimate or otherwise, were entitled to an equal share of the estate on the passing of the father. This led to fatricide and interminable bloody wars between the sons of Welsh kings to determine who should inherit the title. It was a case of winner takes all, and that was the Welsh way. Today, Dolwydilan is peaceful enough. Nestling under the protection of Moel Shabod, the highest peak in the Moel Winion mountain range. The castle that stands guard over the valley was built by Llewellyn Vaur or Llewellyn the Great in the 13th century. But this treetop mound is all that remains of Owen Gwynedd's castle, the birthplace of our hero, Madog. Owen's reign had been one of almost continual battles with other Welsh princes and Henry II of England. Despite a turbulent life, he seems to have enjoyed a peaceful death in 1169. But peace was a long way from the minds of his sons. Bloody fighting broke out between the chief heirs, David, Maelgun and Rhodri. Madog and his brother Hirid were among Owen's illegitimate sons. Their claim to Owen's realm was scorned by his real sons, who considered themselves to be his true heirs. Whilst we are here, let's have a closer look at the castle on the hill. It guards two routes into Eruri, showing Llewellyn's plan for defence. After his days, Dolwydelan Castle became an important stronghold for his grandson, Llewellyn ap Griffith, Llewellyn the Last. Edward I captured the castle through treachery on the 18th of January 1283. It remained in English hands until 1290. It became surplus to Edward's requirements when his strategy of control of the quarrelsome Welsh moved to his ring of castles on the coast. Let's return to our hero. Being of a peaceful, though adventurous disposition, Madog was soon disheartened by his brother's squabbling, and along with his brother Hurid, left Dolwydilan on a journey which became a voyage of discovery. They travelled north through what is now the picturesque village of Betusakoid. Oh, man. 
they must have paused at the spectacular Rhaeadr de Rewinol, the Foaming Falls, erroneously known as Swallow Falls, where the river Llygoi drops dramatically to the valley below, a favourite place of reflection for Llewellyn Vawr, and in later years, his grandson Llewellyn ap Griffith. Eventually, they arrived at the estuary of the River Ganol. Today, it's known as Llandrillo and Rhos, or Rhos and Sea. I think Llandrillo has changed somewhat since Madog's day, though there are one or two buildings he might recognize. This is the cell of Saint Trillo, a monk from Brittany dating from the 6th century, long before Madoc's time. It's built over a healing well. It seats six worshippers and a communion is celebrated here every Wednesday. Saint Trillo is said to be the smallest church in the UK. I can't help but wonder if Madoc actually knelt here praying for a safe voyage. There was little evidence to show that Madog had actually sailed from here. But when the sea wall was being built in the 1950s, workmen discovered the remains of an ancient and forgotten harbour, dating back some thousand years. And so, in 1170, from here, Llandrillo and Ros, Mado Gaboen Gwynedd and his brother Hurid set sail on two ships, the Gorn Gwynant and the Pedur Sant, on what was to be a voyage of momentous discovery. Maybe they'd heard tales of Viking explorers discovering lands far to the west and decided to see for themselves, who knows? Only one thing seems to have been decided before setting off. The direction towards the setting sun, the west. We don't know if they went around Anglesey or through the Menai Straits, passing Bangor, Carnarvon, Llandoin, the mountains of her evil, Morva Nevin.
And if the village of Portinshain had existed, I'm quite sure they would have abandoned their quest and settled for this earthly paradise. And right on the tip of the Sheen Peninsula, Aberdaron. We don't know whether Madog turned north to go between Ireland and Scotland and thus out into the Atlantic Ocean. Or whether he turned south to sail through Cardigan Bay. Whichever way he sailed, his last sighting of his homeland would have been an essentially Bardsey Island. The resting place of 20,000 Welsh saints. In those days, we Welsh, we were a holy lot. I can imagine Madog with a tear in his eye, casting a lingering look as Entley disappeared over the horizon, wondering whether he'd ever see the land of his fathers ever again. He did see Wales again. He returned with tales of a land far across the sea to the west. He persuaded other Welshmen to join him on this great venture. And in 1171, he set sail this time with ten ships. They were never heard of again. It's believed that they landed at Mobile Bay, Alabama. Some scholars believe, in keeping with Elizabethan's taste for the exotic, that Madog was Shakespeare's inspiration for Prospero and the Tempest. In the 18th century, an Indian tribe, the Mandans, were discovered. They were different to the other tribes. They fished with coracles, similar to those still in use on Welsh rivers today. They lived in stone houses and villages, and they claimed ancestry with the Welsh and spoke a language very similar to it. And in 1799, six skeletons in brass armour were discovered, each bearing the Welsh coat of arms. The Mandans were sadly wiped out by a smallpox epidemic, introduced by traders in 1837. 